Father in heaven, be with us throughout this midday power surge is our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Greetings, salutations to Save to Serve International and First Time viewers. Welcome to this midday power surge. This is your spiritual oasis on this pilgrim journey. I'm your host, Andrew Henriquez, on this Thursday, October 12th. Welcome one, welcome all to this midday power surge. Friends, let's get right into this. As you can see in the headline, it is clear what time we're living in. And it's time to expose the warmongers based on end time Bible prophecies. And secondly, I'm going to be addressing that this crisis in the Middle East between the Muslims and the Jews, the question is, is it a black swan event or is it planned? Could it be both? I'm going to be addressing that. What is a black swan event? You have to stay tuned, amen, my friends. And thirdly, I'm going to be addressing that these so-called politicians, are they actually playing mortal combat with people's lives just before the second coming of Christ? You wait until I address that. And lastly, as they say, never let a quote-unquote good crisis go to waste. And while many people's hearts are failing them for fear, what would God say to us if he were here in flesh and blood as it relates to how to address fear factors, placing faith above fear? Let's get right into this, my friends. Media of the beast, which I always speak of, that is actually leading to the mark of the beast. Media of the beast is actually, and presently, they have taken over the news platforms on the left as well as on the right as it relates to the crisis going on in the Middle East. And friends, make no mistake about it, they are beating the proverbial war drum. And emotions are actually like a hot summer day rising. Fears are actually swelling right now, even on social media, as people are taking sides on this issue. I want everyone to contemplate this. Did they, did they, the powers that be, did they not tell us that we, if we simply give up our privacy, give up our security, that they will give us protection? That's what they told us. If we give up our privacy, that they will give us security, which one have we received? Have we received security? We have received neither. If you give up your rights, we will secure you. Neither we have received. And notice, with all the intelligence that the, the Israelis claim to have, this atrocity took place under their watch? Hmm. With all the surveillance going on over there, this egregious act took place? These things must be questioned. They say, give up rights, give up your, your, your privacy, and we will secure you. We have received nothing. And as a result, they're telling us that this is their 911 event. What happened during 911? September 11th, 2001, in New York City. They are creating their boogeyman. Create the crisis, then tell the individuals, the masses, the residents, the citizens, to give up their rights, give up their privacy. So we will secure you from future calamities, but they continue to transpire. This is their boogeyman crisis. It's right there, friends. It's right there. The boogeyman. The boogeyman is gonna get you, as they say. Take a listen. 
Now you have some uh, personal privacy for security. And I've seen in several interviews, you've made the point that what we're getting is not security. Uh, you mentioned Michael Morell, who said we've never caught anyone based on surveillance. Uh, you say what this is is surveillance, not security. Maybe you can go into that a little bit more for the distinction between the two. Yeah. Enough. And that's, that's in the context of what transpired on September 11, 2001. Give up privacy. We will secure you. We have received nothing. So, friends, I have one question for you. What question? Take a listen. And the title of this session, Are We Ready for a New World Order? A New World Order? That's it, friends. Meter of the beast. Listen to this. Nobody is going to escape the New World Order. And remember, the New World Order will actually lead us into the mark of the beast crisis. Listen. For example, this morning when, uh, when the topic was on the New World Order, this is something that will touch everybody and, uh, and we should all be involved in it because whether we like it or not, the New World Order will dictate how things go. My friends, please note what I'm about to say right now. First point, does the Bible show us and history that Popery once ruled the world? Yes. From 538 AD to 1798, that's Revelation 13, verse 1 through verse 10, and focus on verse 7. But the Bible says, even though she lost her dominion, global power and reach and control in 1798, her deadly wound will be healed beginning in America. That's verse 11 to verse 15 and 17 of Revelation 13. So here is my point. Please do not miss this. The talking heads on social media cannot articulate this point. Here it is. Since Popery once ruled the world, and Popery will rule the world again, that means there can never be a new world order without the involvement of Popery. Case closed. That's the nail in their coffin. Take a look at this, friends. There it is. All right, friends. The Pope tells us, as he's telling us what he said to his minions and his uh, henchmen, he says, not prepare for the future, but prepare the future. What am I saying here? In the next few points I'm going to share, you will see they are the ones orchestrating events from behind the scenes. You know what? Lest Dr. Scoffer, Miss Cynic, and Brother Mocker should charge me with simply making things up to get views, that I'm speculating. Let me give a Bible. In the days of Elijah, who was behind the scenes? moving the nations to capture, surveil, and kill Elijah. It was Jezebel, woman, church behind the scenes. And the Bible called Jezebel a harlot. And who is a harlot in the last days? Popery, Roman Catholic leaders. Second point, you remember in the days of Herod and John the Baptist, who was behind the scenes beating the war drum? to surveil, capture, behead that Protestant, John the Baptist. It was Herodias and her daughter, Salome. But Herodias was behind the scenes. Watch now. The point is made. There it is, friends. And who is on the same bandwagon? The Pope and the World Economic Forum. Klaus Schwab. It's time to expose. It's, also it's time to expose the warmongers, listen, he also says the future is not just happening. The future is built by us. You are hearing this from the horse's mouth. Watch. Let's also be clear. The future is not just happening. The future is built by us. Let's also be clear. So can we apply this, my friends, to what's happening now in the Middle East? Now notice, he actually said, you must expect 
black swans, black swan event. Friends, the textbook definition of a black swan event is that you can see what transpired hindsight. The textbook definition of a black swan simply means you cannot predict a black swan. If you predict it, it wouldn't be a black swan. You instigated it. You orchestrated it. Hear what he says. And the last factor I want to mention is resilience. The capability to bounce back because there will be certainly what we call the black swans, the unpleasant surprises which will come in our way. How do you know that? There it is, black swan. What does it mean, black swan? It's there, a disastrous black swan event that only appeared obvious in hindsight. Next. Black Swan, metaphor, describes an event that comes as a surprise, as a major effect. How can they predict this? Remember, he says, the future is not just happening. The future is built by us. That was Klaus Schwab. Listen now to the Pope of Rome. He's telling us, listen attentively, he's telling us to expect great omens. And then he mentions such as not only pestilences, not only climate change or calamities, he mentions wars. Wars? Watch this. There it is, friends. There it is. The Pope says, expect greater omens. And look at the date. All right. Notice what he says here. All right. He says, listen, Filled with the rumbling of war, growing injustice, famine, poverty, and suffering. Did you hear that? Filled with the rumbling of war, All right. growing injustice, famine, poverty, and suffering. And although this horizon seems bleak and disconcerting, with omens of even greater destruction and desolation, do you recall the actual uh, colloquial saying that goes like this, order out of chaos? That's what we're seeing here, friends. The doctrine that runs the world. <laughs> All right, friends, there it is. N Novus Ordo Seclorum. Listen to this. In this video clip, it's talking about how are they going to be able to bring about the new world government or new world order. Brothers and sisters, you have to believe this. They said, we are going to see more wars and bloodshed. What? Yes. Expect great shock events. And this will bring about the new world order. So the question is, what's happening in the Middle East? Is this that which was planned? Question, the Muslims versus the Jews. Is it a black swan event or a planned event? Which one do you say? Listen to this. No, so I, I, mm -hmm. I agree, and, but of course the question is, how, how is this transition going to happen? I mean, I, I agree, totally agree that the world order, the way it is built today, doesn't make any sense. That is, it's not in line with the economic powers like India, Brazil, or Germany. You know that they don't have a they don't have a, a massive role in the in the international order. But to me, the big question is: so how we are going to go through this transform? It has to be. It cannot be gradual. It has mm. to be has to be driven by a part, for, by a certain shock that will happen. So now we will reconsider this entire. Shock. And friends, may I ask you a question? What's transpiring now in the Middle East? Has it shocked the world? You better believe it. They're even calling it their 911 event. Did September 11th, 2001 shock America, shock the world? Yes, it did. 
Now notice, the other panelist on his, uh, on his left side actually said, he mentioned, yes, the pestilence 19 crisis, a shock event. In the same breath, he mentioned bloodshed. And I scratched my head. You mean the pandemic? Bloodshed in the same breath? And then he mentioned, are we to expect more wars to bring about the new world order? Listen to this. It cannot be gradual. It has to be, has to be driven by a, part, for, by a certain shock that will happen. So now we will reconsider this entire... No, so if your question is mm -hmm. that this period could be turbulent, could have violence, yes. could have conflicts, we are already living it. Yeah. I think the last, the last five or six years tell us that we are going through a rather turbulent phase. Mm -hmm. We have lost a large part of humankind to the pandemic because we were all selfish. We, did, we were not willing to share. We were not willing to cre use the global institutions to deliver uh, responses to different parts of the world. We have lost people. Now, how much more bloodshed do we need to understand that the, the transition is upon us? Now, are we going to see a big war? I think that's the hidden dimension. Are we mm -hmm. going to see a, a, a large conflict that is going to mm -hmm. eventually mm -hmm. reset uh, those who sit on the high table? I hope not. The but great... you know, history may not repeat itself. It certainly rhymes. Mm -hmm. And there is always a chance that if we are not wise enough, we may decide to normalize the use of force as the, as the form of dialogue. Friends, there's chills on your shoelace body. It's clear what the agenda is. They're all reading from the same script. Expect more wars. When those statements were made, the war going on with Vladimir and uh, the other person there from Ukraine had already started. Are we to expect more bloodshed? What's happening right now? And remember what they said, never let a good crisis go to waste. Here it is. It says, a world transformed by climate shocks? Listen, in the history of global events, watch this, pandemics and wars have both been proven turning points in history. Climate shocks? We just heard. War shocks will bring about the new world order, the mark of the beast. Never let a good crisis Go to waste. You never want a serious crisis to go to waste. And what I mean by that, it's an opportunity to do things that you think you could not do before. That's it. Clip two. Rahm Emanuel, the ex-mayor of Chicago, once inferred, you never let a good crisis go to waste. Meaning that when we are in crisis times, People that lead usually have much more latitude to do things they could never do under normal conditions. And boy, that is true. Whether you look at... Mm. Friends, the signs are here. And remember, Pope Francis just said the same in Laudate Diem, which is connected to Laudato Si. Watch what he said right here, friends. There it is. He says what? Never... Let a good crisis go to waste, in essence. And what calamities was he referring to? It's right there, the economic crisis, the pestilence 19 crisis. It's there. Use these to bring about the agenda. Watch this, friends. And what are we told in Great Controversy? Page 589, the very ones who claim that they want to take care of society care for the population. They're the same ones behind the scenes, bringing disease and disaster until popular cities are reduced to ruin and desolation. What are they about to do with that nation over there or the, that group of people over there in the Muslim world? Turn that whole country, that whole vicinity in, in an empty parking lot? Friends, right now, they are accelerating the pace. That's why this thing just broke out in the Middle East. Because the Pope and his allies are saying, 
We have seven years left. It's a countdown. Pick up the pace. There it is, my friends. Accelerate the pace. That's it. Seven years to go. Pick up the pace to bring about the new world order, the mark of the beast. Pick up the pace. Pick up the pace. That's it, friends. Seven years, red words, seven years to go. And first notice, the sustainable development goals. Look at number 16. What is number 16 all about? Peace. That's it. So to bring about this peace, they must manufacture wars. Nothing new, friends. There it is. And 2023 is year one of the new global order. The new world order. That's it, my friends. The times that we're living in. Now I want to say this. Do you realize now the Muslims versus Jews, that war is spreading globally? How many people, even here in America, are actually fearful when they go on the trains, the subways, the bus station, airports? Is there a suicide bomber lurking in the bushes? What's in your bag? What's in your suitcase? By the way, fall is coming. Winter is coming. Why is your jacket so puffed up? What's under your jacket? Look at this, friends. There it is. Former Hamas leader calls for worldwide protests to support Palestinians. Hamas called for the mobilization of the Arab Islamic world on Friday in support of Gaza. There it is, friends. And notice what he says. Red words. This is a moment of truth. You can read the rest of that. To all, quote, to all scholars who teach jihad, to all who teach and learn, this is a moment of the application. A moment for the application. Mercy. That's it, friends. Hear what he writes. It says, uh, he said, this will send a message of rage to Zionists and to America. Mercy to all Muslim Muslims in Muslim countries, also among Muslim diaspora around the world. Number four, he asked all Muslims around the world to carry jihad by their souls, to fight and be who? Martyrs. Look what's happening here in America. Fresh off the press on yesterday, October 11th. This is the airport, Washington, D.C.'s. BWI Airport was shut down, I wonder why, over bomb threat after man told cops he had explosives in his car. Look at that, friends. Let's move on from that. Now, from Washington, D.C., from Maryland, let's go up the North Coast, New York City. The mayor of New York, Mayor Adams, tells New Yorkers to beware of lone wolves after attack on Israel over there in the Middle East. This is a, a talking head. Nikki Haley, what is she saying? What happened in Israel could happen here. Yes, fear. Fear, a wake-up call for America. And then she went on to say to Netanyahu, finish them. Is she actually playing Mortal Kombat video game? That's the great question. With people's lives, listen. Did this surprise attack. When they took these hostages, when they murdered these families, they were celebrating. And what were they celebrating? They were saying death to Israel, death to America. This is not just an attack on Israel. This is an attack on America because they hate us just as much. And what we have to understand is this is the reason that we have to unite around making sure our enemies do not hurt our friends. America can never be so arrogant to think 
we don't need friends, just like we needed them on 9-11. That's why Ukraine needs us when Russia's doing this. That's why Israel needs us when Hamas and Iran are doing this. And I'll say this to, to Prime Minister Netanyahu, finish them. Finish them. Hamas did this. You know Iran's behind it. Finish them. They should have hell to pay for what they've just done. So did, did she play Mortal Kombat video games back in the day? Is she in her office playing Mortal Kombat? Finish them. By the way, there is a woman warrior on Mortal Kombat. Am I right, preachers? Am I right? Yeah, yes. Finish them with people's lives. Friends, we have come to a turning point in this world's history. Could this be the war that does it? I don't know. But we need to be prepared. Because remember, the great catastrophic crisis will take the world by a surprise. Christians should be preparing for what is soon to break upon this world as an overwhelming surprise. Prophets and Kings, page 626. It's right there, friends, not my words. The climate crisis, we're told, since 2023 has brought us to a turning point next. Now we are being told, along with climate shocks, yes, the pandemic shocks, but also war shocks, red words, have proven to be a turning point in this world's history. And we're told, my friends, there are periods which are turning points in the history of nations and of the church. In God's providence, when these different crises arrive, hmm, you mean calamities, the pandemic pestilence and wars, the light for that time must be given if it is received spiritual progress. If rejected, then spiritual declension. Shipwreck will follow. And the last sentence, red words, it's speaking about the mark of the beast crisis, the last great conflict between good and evil. We are almost home. Almost home. It says, angels are now restraining the winds of strife that they may not blow until the world shall be warned of its coming doom. And when the winds are let loose, there'll be such a scene of strife as no pen can picture. Friends, think about this. Imagine if this war was to escalate and continue worse than what's happening in Russia and, and the Ukraine. And other nations are, are now brought into this I'm talking about nations with nuclear weapons. What would happen in America and elsewhere? God is holding back the winds of strife. Since we do not know which particular war will lead us into the releasing of the winds, should we not get ready right now? That's why it's time to warn the world. With present truth right now. Watch this, friends. The four mighty angels, we're told, hold back the powers of this earth until God's servants are sealed in their foreheads. Deadly instruments of warfare will be invented. Vessels with their living cargo will be entombed in the great deep but they are to be kept under control until the time shall come for the great battle of Armageddon. The sealing message is necessary. And what is God's seal, my friends? The seal of God found in Revelation chapter 7, verse 1 through verse number 3. The seal of God is God's seventh day Sabbath. The seal of God is victory over sin. 2 Timothy 
chapter 2 and verse 19. Am I ready? Are you ready? Departing from iniquity? Am I being sealed? Are you being sealed? Are we being settled into truth intellectually and spiritually so that we cannot be moved? It's time. It's time, friends. That's why we must spend seasons in fasting and prayer to get victory, to say yes to Christ, no to appetite that's perverted, to say yes to Christ, and no to presumptuous sins, saying yes to Christ, and no to the love of this world, the loss of the flesh. Christ got victory. Victory can be ours. Victory must be ours. I believe it. Do you believe it? Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6 says, For without faith it is impossible to please him, to please God. For he that cometh unto him must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Psalm 91, he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. That secret place, the secret place of prayer. Don't fear the pestilence. Don't fear the arrows. Verse 5, verse 6, a thousand will fall at thy side, ten thousand at thy right hand, but it the plague, it, the calamities, it shall not come nigh thee. Because we are set our love upon Christ and we are surrendered. He gives up the promise that he will protect us, send his angels to protect us in the time of trouble. And that's where I'm going to leave it. The time of trouble is nearer than many of us believe. Let's find ourselves in that secret place. Matthew 6, verse 6, verse 17, verse 18. And remain in that secret place. If you have not yet subscribed to God's platform, do so by God's grace. Send in your comments. Like. Friends, send in the likes that this may go worldwide. Share this. Give it wings. Amen. All right, friends. And by God's grace, I will see you tomorrow for Midday Power Surge at 12 noon Eastern and later for Make It Plain podcast. God bless. The protest continues.